So uh, we are a publicly traded company, so there's our safe harbor statement. Um, this is a company snapshot, and it's basically an overview of uh, the presentation I'm going to give today as well. A little bit of an update on uh, the company, our lead product, MultiSTEM. Um, we'll talk about MultiSTEM relative to our phase two clinical program and stroke that we uh, released data on uh, earlier this year in a publication in Lancet Neurology and do some context setting for uh, the phase three trial and also in support of the uh, treasure trial that's going on in Japan in collaboration with uh, Helios. Um, also talk about our uh, clinical pipeline and end up with uh, an update on a couple of topics related to uh, our clinical programs as well. So this slide is uh, just to give a, a quick overview of the uh, executive leadership, our experiences in the uh, biotech, pharma, and uh, research space. And to highlight uh, Gil, yesterday it was announced that Gil, our chairman and CEO, uh, was uh, put back onto the board of directors here at ARM. So we're uh, very excited about that development uh, and that announcement as well. So uh, we have a number of platform technologies, but our lead technology is uh, multi-stem, it's based on the multipotent adult progenitor cell technology that we have exclusive uh, uh, property, intellectual property to. Um, you can use these cells uh, off the shelf uh, with no tissue matching or immune suppression uh, required to see benefit. Um, the cells work through a number of different um, uh, mechanisms of action, and we'll talk about that in a couple of slides. Uh, we've done in clinical settings uh, administration of the cells via a number of different routes. We can give the cells systemically IV or we can give them directly via catheter or injection. Uh, we've done some work in preclinical models also looking at the uh, activity of the cells in uh, matrix and implant settings as well. And we have long-term uh, stability study uh, of the product frozen uh, greater than seven years now where we still see uh, efficacy. So our, our product development team has spent a lot of uh, hard work over the course of the last couple of years uh, simplifying uh, the product configuration of the cells. And in the, the, the Masters II study, we're going to be using cells in a vial formulation. So these are just basically thawed administer now. Uh, there's no processing required. You take the vial out, you thaw it. Um, you then pull the cells up in a syringe, you put them into the bag of plasma light or saline, uh, take them up to the floor. So basically from the time you call the pharmacy to the time the, the cells are administered, it's less than an hour for the patient. Uh, we also continue to uh, move forward in trying to uh, uh, make a, a better version of the cells vis-a-vis -vis, uh, cost and commercial scale, moving from the traditional 2D planar manufacturing through which the cells are currently uh, manufactured. Uh, we've done a lot of in-house work to, to get the cells into 3D bioreactors on microcarriers and uh, moving forward into commercial scale, scale bioreactors in the coming years to help support both our uh, clinical trials and eventual commercialization. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we've spent basically the last 10 to 15 years uh, doing a lot of research with a lot of collaborators, a lot of animal models, uh, a lot of injury models uh, to try and understand all the mechanisms through which the cells work. Uh, we uh, know a lot more. Uh, I don't think we know everything, but we do have a deep knowledge about the cells, and we believe that the, the, the majority of the, the benefit that we see in both preclinical and clinical settings is through uh, the cells immunomodulating or bringing uh, the immune response in acute injury settings back to baseline, uh, reducing inflammation. Uh, we know when we give the cells uh, proximal to sites of injuries that they participate in neoangiogenesis and vasculogenesis. Um, the cells also drive tissue repair. They themselves do not um, become new heart following a heart attack or new neurons uh, following a stroke, but they do enhance the body's innate reparative mechanisms better than no treatment at all. Moving to stroke, um, I think stroke might be the single greatest uh, unmet medical need that, that is on the planet today. It's the leading cause of disability. It's been uh, discussed by some that it's the greatest single burden on the United States healthcare system when you include both direct and indirect costs. And it's the third leading cause of mortality worldwide. 
In the U.S., we're going to have roughly 800,000 first-time strokes this year, 2.2 uh, first-time strokes in U.S., the EU, and Japan, and about we're, we're approaching 18 million globally first-time strokes every year. Um, and there's an awful lot of these strokes coming up on 3.5 million in China. And so there's only two therapies, and I'll talk about these in just a second, that have to be administered that are approved for treatment of stroke, and they have a very small time window for being administered. So this limits the number of people that could actually benefit from these therapies. And as we're at an increasingly aging population, and uh, in the U.S., an increasingly obese population uh, with our eye devices, uh, this, is, this clinical opportunity and uh, unmet medical need is only going to increase. So this slide basically summarizes uh, TPA and mechanical thrombectomy. Those are the two uh, recognized uh, approved methodologies for treatment of a, an acute ischemic stroke. So one is a clot buster. It has to be given within three to four and a half hours. After that, it becomes more dangerous than, than beneficial. Uh, mechanical thrombectomy uh, is, uh, got benefit out to six hours uh, based on some recent papers that have come out across a number of different groups. The multi-stem therapy, however, um, based on our most recent phase two data, uh, suggests that we have a window of out to 36 hours to the, that the cells can be given and still see meaningful benefit and improvement. So that's 90 to 95% of all stroke patients get to uh, an ICU within the first 36 hours after the onset of their stroke. So this is a much bigger basket that we could catch more patients in and, and provide them benefit. This, this slide is very busy, but it's basically a summary of 12 years of work from um, me and my group. And basically, uh, the, the, the quick story is that following an acute injury to the central nervous system, a stroke, a traumatic brain injury, a spinal cord injury, you get uh, a hyperinflammatory response that emanating from the site of the injury that engages the peripheral immune system, specifically the spleen, um, as well as the lymph nodes and the thymus. And that giving an, an IV administration of the cells within an appropriate time frame basically blunts this inflammatory response from the peripheral immune system with cells going up to the brain and doing more harm than good. Uh, so the, cell, the administration of the multistem actually balances the activation and mobilization of the inflammatory cells and actually turns up and enhances the reparative cells, uh, M2 macrophages and T regulatory cells, uh, and, and initiates a faster reparative response. And we published a paper earlier this year with our collaborator, Sean Savitz, down at UT Houston, uh, that showed some of the animal data around the, uh, this hypothesis. So the involvement of the spleen, a lot of people don't know what the spleen is and does. Um, this is a data from roughly 10 years ago from Keith Pennypacker uh, down at the uh, University of Southern Florida. Um, and basically, this highlights the importance of the spleen in a stroke setting. So I'm just uh, focusing on the, the top images, the, the bright lime green uh, is dead tissue. So in a sham injured animal, there's no dead tissue. You look at the middle uh, figure at the top, on the top row and you see that following induction of a surgical stroke, you lose an awful lot of brain tissue to the stroke. If you splenectomize the animal two weeks prior, allow it to recover and then induce a stroke, you see far less tissue damage. This highlights the amount of tissue that is lost because of the stroke versus the amount of tissue that is lost due to the involvement of the peripheral immune system uh, following the, uh, the stroke. So um, basically, so just talk a little bit, give some uh, high, high level uh, data from our uh, Masters One study, multi-stem administration for stroke treatment and enhanced recovery that uh, came out. The paper was published in Lancet Neurology on St. Patrick's Day this year. Uh, basically, um, this is a map highlighting the 33 centers in the United States and the UK that participated in the study. Um, we had a well-balanced trial. There were no um, imbalances between age, uh, gender, uh, people that got reperfusion therapy or didn't uh, cross the entire trial. Um, final trial results, um, looking at excellent outcome. This is a composite of people that had to get basically full recovery. Um, so there's three groups of patients here I want to look, uh, highlight. So first, uh, the intent to treat. This is all the patients in the trial. And at 90 days, this was not statistically significant, but we saw this trend towards seeing uh, excellent outcome in the stroke treated or in the multi-stem treated versus the placebo treated. When you look at day 365, however, this became statistically significant among 
the entire intent to treat population. When you look at the multi-stem uh, treated at 36 hours or before, uh, we see again a, a bigger uh, difference in, at day 90 and again a bigger difference in uh, complete recovery at day 365. And then finally, if you look at the original uh, intent to treat, the original protocol design that we originally submitted for this study, uh, you see an even larger bridge and uh, roughly a 25% difference between uh, cell treatment and placebo at day 365. This is very exciting data to us. And this slide basically, basically captures going from day 90 to day 365 in uh, all treated patients versus the early treated multi-stem. You can see the difference in the slope and the amount of patients that are actually getting to almost a complete, if not a complete recovery in the cell treatment group. You also see the breakout across the three different scales that we use. So the modified Rankin, the National Institutes of Health Stroke Scale, and the Barthel index. And you can see that giving the cells within a 24 to 36 hour window results in a, in a measurable, statistically significant improvement compare, compared to the placebo treated at some of the early times that we started to, to uh, look at the recovery of the patients. We uh, also, from a reimbursement standpoint, think this is a very important slide. You can see that the cell treatment, when you look at the original trial design, you can see the multi-stem treated groups had statistically significant decrease in days in the hospital as well as days in the ICU. And this has uh, impact for reimbursement and uh, people interested in the, in the healthcare economics. Um, translationally speaking, we had, uh, we looked at both T cells in the blood of the patients as well as a series of inflammatory cytokines. We had seen the cells inhibiting both uh, T cells that were measurable in the blood in a lot of our preclinical animal data, and we saw a statistically significant decrease in uh, CD3 positive T cells in the cell treated versus the placebo treated. We saw a statistically significant improvement in lowering inflammatory cytokines in the blood, exactly like we saw in our animal models as well. So this was uh, all good translational data. Safety profile was uh, exactly what we had hoped for. We saw no infusional toxicity, no abnormal patterns of safety. Um, in the cell treated, um, reduction in life-threatening complications and AEs, lower infections, um, and uh, benefits across a number of different parameters related to the patients enrolled in the trial. And here's an interesting piece of data that I don't think we've uh, shown before. Um, this is looking at the patients the most severely injured based on the NIH stroke scale score. Um, so you can see that of all the multi-stem treated patients, we basically had one patient who had an increase in white blood cells that uh, basically fell under an adverse event compared to the placebo treatment where we saw sepsis, uh, urinary tract infections, acute respiratory failure, things that are associated with uh, um, some of the uh, worst outcomes in stroke patients in the days following the onset of a stroke. And this was uh, one of the things we had pre-specified to look at. Um, so with that data, that was basically some of the, uh, the, the touchstone for the, uh, the Helios partnership. Um, this uh, partnership was announced early in 2016. We're currently running uh, or, or the, the trial with Helios, the treasure trial had kicked off. Um, and uh, it w had started. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, this is the quick 30,000 foot view of the trial design for the MASTERS II study that will be initiating in the near future. Uh, basically the same trial design as the last uh, MASTERS I trial. Uh, a few changes and tweaks here. Patient number, uh, time, of, we're treating an 18 to 36 hour window now. Uh, some changes on the primary efficacy and secondary endpoints as well. Wanted to just mention that uh, we're interested in, in stroke in China. We've been talking, doing some t talking with some people in China and this is a huge market uh, as well. So we've, we've spent a lot of time the last 10 years learning that there's a conserved mechanism we believe that the cells work through in the acute setting versus some of the chronic diseases. There's some similarities in the chronic disease treatment by the cells as well, but uh, a conserved mechanism that we think we can address. Um, so here's our pipeline. We have two phase three trials that are either initiated or soon to initiate in stroke. Uh, these have been supported by the FDA, both fast track, special protocol assessment. Um, we have an ongoing phase two in uh, AMI, an ongoing phase one in acute respiratory distress syndrome. And my last slide, uh, it was just announced today, we received RMAT designation, which complements and completes our pipeline right from a regulatory standpoint for uh, 
uh, including the SPA and the fast track for our stroke program. We've spent a lot of time uh, in evaluating opportunities for our stroke program and have ongoing uh, discussions uh, both here and in China. Um, and uh, as far as our CNS clinical operations, we're continuing to get ready to initiate the MASTERS II trial. Helios uh, announced that the Treasure trial had been stopped uh, due to some issues related to placebo, but I'm, I'm here to, to tell you that uh, Lanza has completed multiple production runs of the placebo and uh, release and delivery to Japan are in process, and I'll leave it to Hardy and the Helios team to update uh, further on that in the near future. So with that, I'll take any questions out in the hallway, and thank you very much for your time.